Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about one more easy problem from lead code. The problem name is apply operation to an array. The problem statement goes like this, that you're given a zero indexed array nums of size n consisting of non-negative integers. Now you have to apply n minus one operations to this array where the ith operation, in the ith operation what you'll do, you'll apply the following to the ith element of nums. If nums of i is equal to nums of i plus 1, so if nums of i equal to nums of i plus 1, what you'll do is that you multiply nums of i by 2. Like you will multiply nums of i with 2 and set nums of i plus 1 to 0. Now you will otherwise skip this operation if there, this condition is not satisfied with nums of i equal to nums of i plus 1. And after performing all the perturbed operations, you will shift all the zeros to the end. So let's take an example of this particular exam. Uh, here problem is that you will first take that at any instance whether nums of i is equal to nums of i plus one. So if two consecutive elements are same or not. Okay. So let's take an example of not this but this. That's much more clear. So these two consecutive are same. No. These two consecutive are same. Yes. So what you will do is that you will multiply this element by two. It will become four, and take the next element to be zero. It becomes zero, it will become there becomes like this one, four, zero, one, 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 like one, one, zero. Then you will like let's say you will check that whether these two are consecutive, no. Then whether these two are consecutive, yes. So you will multiply this by two, this will become two, this will become zero, and these two are again zero only. So the array finally becomes like this one, four, zero. 2, 0, and 0. And the end, what you'll do, you have to shift all the non zero elements on the left hand side and all the zero elements on the right hand side. So it will eventually become 1, 4, 2, 3 zeros. And that's the solution. Now, it seems very pretty much simple to you as well. But the problem is not too difficult to understand as well and not too difficult to like implement as well. So what we'll do is that you will just do a for loop from left to right over this array. Whenever you find out two consecutive elements to be same, then you will do this particular operation of converting the first and make like multiplying it with two and the next is just converting it to zero. Keep on doing that, you have the final array. That's not, not the hard part. The hard part is to convert this into this array by shifting all the zeros to the end and non-zeros on the very front. Now, uh, you can do this without, you can say, taking any extra space as well and also by taking extra space. By extra space, let's take an example of that. Let's say that you have this as an array. 1, 4, 0, 2, 0, 0. Now what you can do is that by taking extra space, I mean that you can make one more array and whatever, and you will initialize everything with 0 in that. So let's say everything is 0. And what you will do is that you will just iterate over this array from left to right. And you will one, take one pointer here. And if any number is non zero, you will put it here inside this array. So you will like mark it as one, then put next element that is four, next element two, and you have all the non zero elements in the very front, all the zero elements at the end, and you will have the rest. That's all uh, thing for this particular problem that you could have done this by using one more extra array. But can you optimize on the space here? In that scenario, you could have done these two pointers on the same array. Now let's try to do that really quick. What you'll do is that let's take an example of this 1, 4, 0, 2, 0, 0. Now, my overall idea is that I will take two pointers. One pointer is let's say j here, and one pointer again, let's say i here. i is just doing a for loop over this array, and what j here do, does is that j gives us the guarantee that wherever j is, all the elements before and on j should be non-zero. Then only j will move to the next element. So what I will do is that if I find out any non-zero element, it will swap it with j. Okay. And it will swap it with j, which means that now j has a non-zero element. Okay. Let's take a very quick example to understand of that. Let's write it down here. One, four. i and j both are here okay like i and j both are here and i will say that okay i 
say that I am at a non-zero element. So it will swap at where J is. And J is also on the same element. So it will swap it. And so what eventually happens is that both move to the left element. Now again, I and J both sit on the same element and both is non-zero, both move to the left element. Now what you can say is that I say that I am not on a non-zero element, so I will keep moving, but J will not move. Why? Because J will only move when it has a non-zero element. Like J will only move to the next element if it is on a non-zero element. If it is on a zeroth element, so it will not move. I will move. So as you can see, I will go to here. J is still here. Now what you can see is that I will tell that okay, now I am on a non-zero element. I will tell that I am a non-zero element. So it will swap it with this J because J will only move when it is on a non-zero element. So why not just swap J with this particular element so that J will become and sit on a non-zero element and it, it can directly easily move to the next element. So this two elements are swapped. This will become as you can see two and this will become zero. And now J will also come here and I can directly easily go here. Now all elements now are zero only. So what you can observe, understand from here is that J will tell us that I will only move that if I am a non-zero element and I will keep on moving that and if it finds a non-zero element, it will swap it with J so that J can directly easily move to the right element. And in that scenario, J always move to the right element if it is on a non-zero element. Thus, it will always guarantees that all the elements that are non-zero on, on the left hand side of J. So it will eventually just putting all the elements in a sequential manner. That's it. So that's all the logic that you have to use to put insert all the elements on the left hand side and like shift all the elements on the left hand side and all the zero elements on the right hand side. Let's try to understand this with the code part as well. So this is very pretty much simple part that is a for loop taking i th element and i plus one if they are same, just converting i and multiplying the i th element with two and taking the other element as zero. And that's it. And then uh, moving now to the next part, you will make two pointers that is j and i. j is starting on the zeroth element and i is going from left to right just using a for loop. If i sits on a non-zero element, then what it'll do? It will swap the nums of i and nums of j, which eventually just makes that now j is pointing towards a non-zero element, then only j will move. It, if i is pointing towards zero element, this if condition will not meet and it will keep on going to the right hand side, not hitting and not moving j. And j will only move if i is on a non-zero element, it will swap it with j so that j now sits on a, you can say, non-zero element and then only have to move to the right hand side. And that's it. That's the logic that you have to use. And the end, you have this with nums. This is done in O of n. This is done in O of n. So time obscurity is O of n only. And the space complexity is none because I am doing everything in this particular, like you can say, vector only. That's it. That's all the logic and the code part for this particular video. If you still have your doubts, you can mention in the comment box of this particular video. I will see you in the next coding and bye.